Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Thrasher's Paradise, Symphonic Calgary Metal Edition, as I am joined with guitarist to, as I pre-mentioned, Calgarian Symphonic Metal Band, Osiren. I am joined with Kristoff, who, I apologize for mispronouncing the name. That's okay. <laughs> okay. We're here to talk about Foundations, their album from last year, and their re- and their deluxe edition release of King's Bang, which came out just a couple weeks ago. So, I ask you, where do you want to start with? Uh, let's uh, let's start with Foundations, I guess. Get your Foundations questions. Okay. Well, right off the bat, the main thing I think that caught a lot of people's attentions, and including my own, was the bonus track at the end, which I don't know if it's available to everyone, but on Spotify, where I heard the album, it wasn't available, where you all did a rendition of the beloved O Canada. Yes. So, going into the creation of Foundations, was this a was this always in the plans before, like just in general, to release your version of the national anthem, or was it just a spur of the moment thinking? So uh, originally, uh, it wasn't when we did Foundations, but when we were going to release it for Spotify, we wanted to kind of have it as like a little bonus for uh, people going on to Spotify and listing. So like on the CD version, it's not there. Spotify version it is. And it's actually, it's a version of O Canada that we did a little bit before that. We released uh, like a music video for it. We did like a metal version of O Canada because we hadn't really heard one. Um, there's been like guitar covers of it, but not really like a metal version. So we did like our own little Osiren metal version of O Canada. And we put up like just a music video uh, and we just kind of released it, didn't think anything of it. And then we, we actually found out that high schools like across Canada and different places were playing it. And we we're like, what? That's so funny. So then we we're like, okay, well, we'll remix it. We remix it for the Foundations album and uh, tagged it onto the Spotify release. Awesome. Now, last year, Sp- last year, Foundations came out nine days after Canada Day. Now, <laughs> Of course, with that being the bonus track, was there kind of a thought of maybe we should release this on Canada Day to kind of be like, you know? <laughs> uh, no, so yeah, there, there wasn't too much thought of that just because we had already planned the releases. Um, but the because the video was already out kind of thing, right? So it's it's been out for a couple of years now. And it has like a decent amount of views. Like I said, we did it for fun. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you've seen the video yourself. But uh, it's on our YouTube, and like we're we're like wearing hockey jerseys. We go to Tim Hortons, like we shotgun Tim Hortons out. <laughs> so, yep that that is something I must watch. That just sounds purely yeah. Canadian. Um, it's, what was that like yeah. to shotgun the Timmies? Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's probably one of the better things we shotgun because obviously we grew up in uh in uh, we actually were me and Bobby, the other guitar player, were from Ontario. We grew up there. Oh. And uh, you know, so going to college in Ontario, you you shotgun the cheapest beers possible. So, <laughs> what part of Ontario, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, we actually we grew up in Sarnia. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when we when we first got started, we were actually in a band in Sarnia called uh, Morbid Theory, and we used to play out in Hamilton quite a bit with a couple of Hamilton bands like Death Point and that kind of stuff. Way awesome. back. Awesome. So in and around like the Doors pub and all that other stuff, kind of. Yeah, exactly. So nice. it's it's been a while since we played in Ontario, though. Obviously, we moved to Alberta uh, a number of years ago and have been playing out west mostly. So we'd like to get back. We're hoping to once the pandemic kind of dies down. We'd love to get back to Ontario. Awesome! It'd be great to see you guys live because I gotta say I love Foundations and I would love to hear it in person. I definitely think it's going to be one of those albums that sounds better when you hear it live than recorded. For sure. Uh, For you, when it came to the creation and the writing process of Foundations, for you particularly, as you are one of the guitarists, what song did you have the most difficulty writing? Um, I don't know if there's a particular song that was, like, difficult, uh, but, like, not so much difficult, but one that had like the most interesting writing process was actually uh, Battle of the Thames, uh, because it was actually like written as like an acoustic demo by our singer Reed. And then we took it like 
the way we write albums is we kind of bring ideas to the table. We just kind of listen to them and vote on them. And as soon as we all heard his like little phone acoustic demo, we're like, oh, this this has to be on the album. It's just so good. But then we took it from this like kind of bare bones acoustic thing and then we built it up in layers. We added like, you know, uh, like instruments, like like orchestra instruments or like flutes and like guitar layers. And like we added like a big outro kind of thing, added solos and stuff. So that was the most that's probably the most fun because we're all doing it together in a in a room. Whereas the other songs, we kind of uh, we almost brought almost full ideas uh, to the table. So that one was the most kind of like not so much difficult or a challenge, but it was the most like involved, I think, for writing. Awesome. Now. I mentioned it a bit earlier. It came out July 10th last year. We're coming up on it being a year next month. Ha- has that sunk in yet that you've released that over a year ago now? Uh, it actually, it hasn't until you mentioned it. I didn't think it was that long ago. It feels like it just came out, uh, but that's probably because of the pandemic and like you're kind of, you're sitting at home, you're not getting to play, you can't, like you can't even rehearse, right? So. Mm-hmm. You haven't really realized how much time has gone by, but like a lot of time's gone by. It's like a year and a half now where we're like stuck indoors and not able to to do anything. But yeah, it hasn't really sunk in until now. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of stuff that are a bit older, 2017's King ba- King's Bane recently on May 14th of this year, you you all decided to release a remastered version and a deluxe edition of King's Bane. What brought up this idea to remaster it, re-record a couple of the songs, and make one acoustic? Uh, so I guess the, the biggest driving factor there was because of the pandemic uh, and like we're not able to play shows, we're not able to uh, tour or anything, um, interact with fans. We thought we had a lot of free time. We could go and rem- uh, remix it, first of all. Uh, the original version and the re- remixed, remastered uh, they're both mixed by our bass player, Tyler Corbett. Uh, and then the remaster was mastered by our drummer, Cody Anstey. They both run their own independent studios. Uh, we had a lot of free time. We decided to do that. And then for the songs that we re-recorded, uh, Viper Queen was the first one. We always felt that like that song really took off live kind of thing. On the record, it was kind of the odd one out. But live, everybody seemed to love it. it had like a great energy. So we wanted to get that energy into the recorded version. So we... We did a few things. We cut down the solo sections. We cut down the chorus to be shorter. Uh, Then we upped the tempo just to make it like faster to get that kind of live energy. Uh, Because we always felt that that song really didn't kind of have that kind of justice done for itself. Uh, Grief Maker, we wanted to redo as well because I think the first minute and a half on the original is basically all like orchestra instruments and like a little bit of drums and stuff. And we wanted to like really squish that down as well and make it more guitar driven and we took more of a martyr modern approach to writing it um because king's Bane came out you know 2017 so when we wanted to redo grief maker we wanted to give it like a, a modern osiren facelift so that's kind of like a song we would have written now but in the same vein as as the grief maker original and then razor's wind the acoustic track um the original razor's wind song is like kind of like a folk symphonic metal epic it's like you know it's super long and it's got all these melodies so we wanted to like really distill it down to the most like celtic folky melodies uh bobby harley the guitar player uh his mom's from ireland kind of thing so he grew up listening to like irish folk music and that was kind of the big driver for that whole song was like all those all those folk songs he grew up or grew up listening to so we kind of really wanted to like bring it down into like its core which is basically just folky acoustic melodies Um, And it was fun to do because we haven't had like a fully acoustic song. We've had like acoustic sections or like riffs, but not really like a full acoustic song. So that was very fun. When it comes to recording an acoustic song compared to one with an electric guitar, is it more difficult or is it easier? It's definitely more difficult. So I don't know if you play guitar yourself. Uh, Sadly, no. Yeah. So like electric guitar, like, I, I mean when you're playing it physically um it's a lot easier than acoustic Uh, acoustic guitar the strings are like higher gauge and they're like a lot more tension right to get sound to come out of it and you pick up mistakes way more so you have to be like on it uh and it's it's a lot it's a lot harder on your fingers too right um because the strings are such high tension and stuff so it's definitely a lot harder to do acoustic stuff than electric for sure 
Now, as we mentioned, you are from on you are originally from Ontario, but there are still a lot of Ontario people that might not know who exactly Osiren is. For you, just briefly, could you please explain to the people who might have not heard of Osiren what exactly the band is and what is the main goal? Oh, okay, yeah, that's that's always a tough question. Um, I should have prepared it. Uh, so, <laughs> I guess the the big thing is that. Like who we are as a band is, uh, like obviously we're five different people that listen to actually a wide range of music. But when we get together, we kind of have this vision uh, of kind of writing music that we like to hear live, right? So we, being that three of us are actually guitar players, um, you know, like we love guitar-driven music. We love music with uh, kind of like big melodies, right? Your big choruses, but uh, because we grew up listening to like your kind of thrash metal bands like we love riffs we love uh, i personally love like complex things if you could sneak them in and make them feel okay right and, but it's actually like complex i think that's really cool that's the kind of stuff we like we like you know we don't like putting ourselves in boxes we kind of like don't want to say we're just like a thrash metal band just a melodic death metal band or just a metal band like we're that's kind of what we like the prog thing because we can do anything we want if we want to have a, a section that's soft we can do that like it's it's always hard to describe yourself, but like yeah, big things for us are like you know melody hooks, like very strong songwriting. That's always been a goal of ours. We always want to be better songwriters. We want to be we want to be playing songs live that have dynamics that have like an ebb and flow. When you see the band live, you want to like have intense moments and like kind of laid back moments. You want to have like a whole show experience. So that's what we strive to do. I guess I don't know if we deliver that, but that's what we try to do. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you for that brief description, just because I know a lot of the viewers of this channel are, happen to be from Ontario or from outside of Alberta, so I just wanted them to get a better feeling of what exactly Osiren brings to the metal community. For sure. For, sure. Uh, for you, what has the overall reception been so far to the release of the Deluxe Edition? Actually, it's been really good. Um, we tried a couple new things, too, uh, especially now because... Uh, as time has gone on, bands aren't really doing albums anymore. You're kind of always doing singles. So we tried to push kind of a few singles out before we released the album. Uh, big things like, you know, getting people to pre-save uh, single releases or album releases on Spotify. That's huge. Uh, so we tried to really push that this time around. And that really does help. Um, it's it's one of those things you kind of have to do. And but But so far, I know the response has been really good. People have really love the new takes on the on the three original songs uh, which is always like nice to to hear because you you can't really please everyone but when you do it's nice you're like all right awesome they don't completely hate it so <laughs> it's been it's been good i'd say it's been very good so far awesome i'm glad to hear the the fans are enjoying yeah. the uh the new take on beloved osiren songs uh for you when it came to foundations, so far, with it now being almost a year, what has been the reception from fans or new listeners or just in general from the critics themselves? Uh, so foundations actually, uh, critically, it, it was it was very well liked um, in terms of like uh, like review websites. There's you know hundreds of them on the internet. Uh, it's been received very well. I think. Uh, most of our fans loved it like i said it's it's kind of like we still have the main things that we're known for like we are known for um like epic choruses and that kind of stuff because our singer reed right he's got an awesome voice uh don't tell him i said that um <laughs> but he, like you know so that kind of stuff works but we we've kind of really trimmed the fat in our songwriting we're a lot more focused when we write songs don't have a lot of like uh nothing feels like it's like a filler song so i think that's been good especially on foundations because it was so short too there wasn't really room for a filler song they all had to be uh, like kind of 10 out of 10 knockouts um yeah no it's been it's been as far as we know it's been really good like uh we've on like the loud charts the earshot like college radio we've we've had a number of months where we've tracked in the top 10 which is always good to see uh just recently uh, a radio station out in lethbridge we were in their kind of uh network we were like number four for last month which was awesome so yeah no it's 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 been good people have really liked it which is nice um yeah can't complain. Awesome. Awesome. Now, second last question I would like to ask you. Uh, 
Well, this one is the last one about the music and all that. The, the very last question is a fun one. Uh, awesome. <laughs> because of the pandemic and because of all this fun stuff that has been going around, because Canada, right? Yeah. <laughs> Has Osiren started to work on new material for a future release? Yes, we have. Actually, we started uh, even before the re-release of Kingsbane came out. So we're actually, we've got about six of ten songs already done. And we got four more to finish kind of thing for sure. With two kind of up in the air, we might, depending on how long the CD is, we might get them on, we might not. Mm -hmm. uh, and... Yeah, no, the demos are actually sounding really good. Um, I think it's definitely a continuation of where Foundations left off musically. Um, so Foundations, like, we all kind of had a song we wrote on there, and we're kind of continuing that pattern for the next album. Uh, it's it's basically all of us are either writing songs or contributing to writing songs, so that's really nice. And yeah, we're like applying for factor grants and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, because without shows, you're not making money. So, mm -hmm. gotta go. Gotta go ask Trudeau for some coin. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is awesome to hear. And I cannot wait to hear this new music whenever it hits the air, the streaming platforms or musical awesome. places yeah, and I'm, stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to, to see what you think of it, to, to see what everyone thinks of it. It'll be nice. Yeah. Awesome. And as I mentioned, this is a fun question. We always ask. First time guests coming on the channel just to test their metal knowledge. It's very simple. Oh shit. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll, yeah, I'll do my best. I make okay. no promises. <laughs> Fuck, pressure's on. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, it's not it's not a math question. <sighs> okay, good. Okay, good. <laughs> no. So who would win in the fight? Lemmy or God? Oh, Lemmy, because Lemmy's real, first of all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And he's way more of a badass, even if God was real. Doesn't stack up. <laughs> well, you have given me the correct response, so <laughs> there's nothing to fear. Oh. That was that was easy. That was easy. <laughs> yeah, so, thank you so much, Christoph, for your time and for taking this. Well, for taking it out of your day to come and talk to me. Not now, Cat. Uh, <laughs> is there anything else you would like to say to the people that are going to be watching this on YouTube? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, if you guys check us out, you like us, uh, do give us follows on Spotify, on our YouTube, and uh, on our Instagram, and, and that kind of stuff. Stay stay connected with us, stay engaged kind of thing. We're regularly posting content up on those places to keep people kind of in the loop with what's coming. And yeah, we're, uh, yeah, that kind of stuff, it helps. So yeah, if you like us, check us out on those and uh, give us a follow. Awesome. <laughs> Till next time, everyone. Keep yeah, on thrashing. Oh, you're welcome. Peace. <laughs>